How would you feel if you could simplify your homeschool and make it more manageable? It's like a dream, right? We all want that. Well, I think I have the answer for you. And it is from this, yes, a business book, Effortless by Greg McCown. I'm gonna show you how you can apply these principles to your homeschool. So let's get into it. So what is the effortless state? Well, according to McCown, the effortless state is an experience many of us have had when we are physically rested, emotionally unburdened, and mentally energized. You're completely aware, alert, present, attentive, and focused on what's important in this moment. You're able to focus on what matters most with ease. In the book Effortless, McCown describes how we need to simplify our lives to find ease. We're humans and we make life more complicated than it needs to be. So we need to eliminate those complexities in order to have an effortless life, an effortless business, an effortless homeschool. And so how can we do that in our homeschool? That is by focusing on the essentials. So focusing on the essentials is just one step in having an effortless homeschool. What are the essentials for you? Like you don't have to do everything. Um, focus on the essentials and get those right, do those well and do them better just by focusing on what's important. So you don't have to do all the subjects. Maybe you're on Instagram and you're, you see what other homeschoolers are doing and so you kind of have a little bit of FOMO and a little bit of self doubt and now you want to do the same thing and it's just, it's too complex. Like you don't need to do that. Like life is already busy enough and we want more space in life. So we don't need to do all the things. Our homeschool doesn't have to be like other people's. We need to homeschool the way that fits best for our lives, for our kids, for our, you know, maybe you have a business as, and you homeschool as well. Maybe you're working full time. Maybe, you know, maybe you haven't, there's an illness in the family. Maybe you're sick. So like, you don't have to do all the things. You need to focus on what is essential and what's most important for your family. Next, we're gonna talk about tiny habits. Like, you know, it's important to have goals, but sometimes those goals can be overwhelming when we see it, just the big picture. Instead, we need to take that big picture and break it down into tiny little increments. The power of tiny habits is that they just kind of build up over time, it just becomes better and better. So making those tiny consistent steps to better your homeschool will make things a lot easier. Like in the beginning of the year, instead of diving into all of the subjects that you wanna cover, just start covering one topic at a time. Or if you are focusing on US history and there's a lot to learn, break it down into smaller bits and you can focus on those one at a time rather than trying to get all the information into your kids. And then also remember that you don't have to do it all. Do what's important, what's essential, and then break those down into tiny steps and you're on your way to an effortless state. Next is to make things fun. It's hard to get into an effortless state if you are doing something you don't enjoy. <laughs> Sometimes you need to pair what you don't enjoy with something that you do enjoy. Maybe your kids don't like math and so turn on some music so they have some pleasant music to listen to while doing math. Or maybe bake some cookies so they can munch on cookies while doing math. Maybe writing is a struggle in your homeschool. So have the, your kids turn on some mood lighting or something, I don't know, get into the mood, make it cozy. Maybe instead of working at the desk, snuggle on the couch, light a candle or diffuse some essential oils, do something to relax the mood and to make it more enjoyable. I know like when I'm doing dishes, I don't like doing dishes. So I listen to podcasts. And so that makes the process a lot easier. Cleaning, I do not like to clean, um, but we have to do it. So uh, turn on some music and have a dance party when you clean or like listen to an audiobook or a podcast. So the same can be applied to homeschooling. What do your kids struggle with? And then make it fun in some way. And then you can also incorporate games and other activities into your homeschool. Like you don't have to just do math workbooks or math facts or whatever you're studying. You can do math games as well. Just make it fun for the kids because if it's not fun, no one's gonna really wanna do it. Next is to learn principles and not facts. And this is something I have practiced <laughs> most of my life. You know, when you know the principles, when you know like the big picture, you know the why and the how, 
the facts don't really matter because when you know the principles, you can apply it to other areas in your life. Like I full heartedly follow the 80-20 principle or the Pareto's principle. I apply it to various parts of my life. Like when it comes to eating, I eat clean 80% of the time. 20% of the time I don't because life is short. I'm not gonna <laughs> make myself suffer <laughs> to be the healthiest ever that I can be. Understanding principles, of math can apply those principles that you've learned into other subjects like economics, business, science, baking, etc. So one of the first things you want to do is to have clarity. And sometimes we find clarity through inversion. And that means instead of asking why is this so hard instead think about like how can I make this easier? Applying that concept, how can I make it easier? How can I make teaching math easier by having someone else teach it. And that's what we've done. How can I make writing easier? Find an online writing program that my kids really enjoy. How can I make science easier? Order science kits and call it a day when you get those kits and you've studied science for the month. How can I make art easier? Incorporate it into your other studies like language arts and history and science. Or how can I make art easier there's a ton of online art programs that you can utilize. How can I make homeschooling easier? Don't do it all. <laughs> and next is embracing the power of rest. Rest is so important, whether you're resting, taking breaks throughout the day or resting in between like unit studies or sessions or semesters or however you want to homeschool. Resting is so important because it's not good to power through. And sometimes like today, my son was doing math. He wasn't focused and he wasn't really into it. Instead of powering through and making him finish what he started, I said, okay, we're done. Let's take a break. And so we did. And he's not going to fall behind because of that. He obviously wasn't in a good state to learn. And so taking a break resting is what's going to benefit him the most. For spring, normally we take one or two weeks off. This time it was a little bit longer and that's okay because we all needed it. And it wasn't like they didn't get any learning done. There was no formal learning, but there was, learning was still happening. I kind of, our breaks, I kind of call it our unschoolish days. They did science projects. We had science kits that they did. They planted a garden they were taking swim lessons they you know were doing a lot of fun things interesting things and still learning at the same time but we were resting at the same time as well and finally it's about getting into a flow you know that magical feeling where like time kind of flies by and you're getting so much done like that it's easy there's no friction and so getting into that state like you need to think about how slow is smooth and smooth is fast. So if we just slow things down, do what's essential, remove any friction, homeschooling will be a lot easier. I think it's important to create an environment that allows for flow. And that may be like the night before you prepare everything in advance, write down, you know, what the kids are going to do. You get the books out and ready to go. You get any science materials that you may need or art supplies and you just have that all out ready to go. So in the morning when you wake up, you don't really have to think about all that stuff. It's already there. You can just kind of go with it. Also like, you know, getting into the flow is just finding your family's homeschool routine, your rhythm, like what's your natural rhythm? Like how does everyone flow? Like, you know, like my kids, they like to play first before we start homeschooling. And I know some people prefer to homeschool first and then let their kids play. So you just gotta do what works for your family and for you as well, not just your kids, but for you as well. And remember the goal of being a relaxed homeschooler is having an easy, stress-free, effortless homeschool. Keep it simple, keep it fun, keep it effortless, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Ciao.